Oh, come on now. There we go. Today we're talking about stick welding electrodes. In particular, I'm going to demonstrate the three that I've seen most commonly, one from each of the common types of welding electrodes. So it'll be pretty representative of whatever you have available wherever you are. I have my rods all lined up and I'm going to demonstrate them on some 1 8 inch thick steel T-joints. Now I'm connecting the electrode to the positive side and my work clamp to the negative. DC electrode positive works for all these rods. I'm going to be using the HTP Inverarc 160 today. A lot of people ask me how I connect my work clamp for samples like this. It's just hooked to that well-loved aluminum plate and I have an extra camera set up so you can get a good view of the arc. The first electrode we're going to run is a 6013. In the past, this hasn't come very highly recommended by me, but it's grown on me over the years, and I think it's actually the best fit for a lot of people. Let's run it, and I'll show you why. A 6013 runs on a lower amperage than a lot of electrodes, so for 3 32nd inch, I'm going to set it right at 70 amps. As I'm setting up to weld, notice how the electrode, rather than being installed straight into the electrode holder, I've put it out at an angle. This is going to keep the electrode holder from running into the table, and that can be pretty helpful in a lot of cases. Anyway, I'll prop up here and figure out how I'm going to support myself and strike an arc with the electrode a little bit more straight to contact the center and lean in with that drag angle. Here with 6013, you can weld in a straight line. It's pretty straightforward and runs a smooth bead as long as you keep a short arc length and a steady travel speed and a consistent rod angle. Notice that slag right there. It is right up on the puddle, really close to the electrode. And that's really the biggest downside to running a 6013 is that slag can move up on you and that can be problematic. Now there are several advantages to running a 6013. It can run on just about any inverter machine as well as just about any AC buzz box out there. So it's really useful no matter what kind of machine you have. It's also pretty easy to strike an arc with. So it's pretty nice, but you do need to be right on it with your technique and your amperage setting to avoid having problems with the slag mixing in. Watch what happens here towards the end of the weld. I made a mistake, but I left it in there because I thought it might be good to talk about. Notice the arc length is getting long and my angle is getting out of whack. It's a little hard to see that in this shot, but uh, it is. The reason for that is that I had to use more electrode than I'd planned on and my hands collapsed all the way down, that left hand that was supporting my electrode, and so I ended up getting pushed out of position. Let's clean this off, a little bit of chipping, a little raking, a little bit of brushing, and take a look. And you can see throughout the length of the weld, it's pretty good until that last portion where I ran out of room and got in a bind. So be careful with that. Now we're going to run a 7018. This is a basic electrode, or sometimes in industrial spaces it's called low high because it can deposit a low hydrogen weld when done in a particular way. Let's go ahead and run it and I'll show you what I like so much about this rod. 7018 electrodes run a higher amperage than a 6013, so for the same 3 seconds of an inch electrode, I turned it up to 85 amps. I'm going to learn from the past here and just set up some vice grips to be able to prop up in a better way so that I won't run out of room and get in a bind at the end. Now with an arc struck, I'm just maintaining that drag angle and moving right along. I need to keep my arc length nice and short and with a 7018, the arc actually burns back inside of the flux a little bit. So you end up pushing it all the way down to where that flux is just about scrubbing right on your material. Notice how the slag is hanging back in this case. So you can see that puddle that's bright with the arc illuminating it, and the slag is hanging a ways back from the electrode. This is really nice. The nice thing about 7018, you can see exactly what's happening, exactly where your weld's going in, and make sure that you're filling everything in. So I like it for that reason. It gives a good, smooth bead. Now, traditional 7018s are a DC-only electrode, so they won't work with AC machines, so there is an AC version available. You just need to check your package and make sure that the electrode you have will work with your particular machine. With some low-cost inverter machines, you end up uh, needing to run a 7018 AC, even though it's a DC inverter machine, so keep that in mind if you're having trouble actually running those rods. I've helped a couple people out with that problem. When welding to a code, 7018s are actually stored at an elevated temperature in an oven to avoid moisture getting into the flux, which can introduce hydrogen into the weld and cause cracking on thick sections that are high strength steel. One frustration with 7018 is this slag coating you can end up with over the end of the rod, making it difficult to strike an arc on the second time. You can clean this off with a file or a chipping hammer, or when you finish your weld, you can end it with a little flick like this. 
and that will toss the molten slag off the end and you'll just have the metal that's recessed in the flux a little bit. You can break that off with your glove and you'll be in good shape, ready to weld. Let's take a look at the finished 7018 weld. If the slag doesn't peel on its own with 7018, it usually just takes a little bit of raking. This is pretty representative of the smooth bead appearance you can expect to get from a 7018, and that's one of the reasons I really like using it for all sorts of projects. Now the last rod we're gonna run is a 6010. This is a cellulosic electrode, and it digs in deep. It's totally different than running the other two that we've run here today. Let me show you. I'm using a 1 8 inch or 3.2 millimeter 6010, which is larger than the other two electrodes. However, I'll run the same amperage setting that I had for the smaller 7018. And I'll set up here and I'll prop in the same way I did on the last. Oh, come on now. All right, well, I figured I'd leave that in there just for your own enjoyment. Anyway, when I strike an arc with this, you'll notice there are a lot more sparks that fly out with the 6010 and it digs in really deep. So notice I'm using a little bit of a back and forth motion. This is called a whip and pause technique. Let's take a look at the arc to see what that looks like. So here, because it digs in so deep, I need to regulate the heat by moving forward to the front of the puddle and then back into it again. So the bead won't be smooth like the others, it'll have a bit of texture to it. Now 6010 is a DC only electrode, so it won't work on older transformer buzz box type machines. Also, it uh, won't work with a lot of really low cost inverter machines. And so for those, you just need to switch to a 6011, which runs in a pretty similar way, but it does need a little bit higher amperage than you need with a 6010. Let's take a look once again at the arc here. And because of the way it penetrates deep in industry, it's often used to run root passes on pipe because you can weld all the way through to the backside. It's also used on pipe fence or other applications and it's a little bit more tolerant of dirty or rusty material than some of the other electrodes that you might choose. Let's take a look at how much less of the electrode we used because we're running that larger diameter electrode. It's a pretty big difference. The slag from 6010 is just a really crusty, thin material. I usually break it loose with a chipping hammer and then finish it off with a wire wheel and a grinder. You can see that textured appearance. I'm not the most practiced at running a 6010 like this, but uh, with a little practice, you can get it to look pretty slick. Now let's bring it all together and talk about what rod you may actually want to use depending on your situation. Now something that's important to understand is that there isn't always one right electrode and if you don't use that one, the world will explode. Now there are critical industrial applications where it matters a lot what rod you use, how you handle it, and a whole lot of other things about your welding procedure. But you shouldn't be developing a welding procedure for that based on a YouTube video anyway. Because if you just wanna do general fabrication and repair around your garage, you're dealing with relatively thin plates of mild steel, you could use a 6013 or a 7018 and do just fine in all of those situations. Other than running root passes on pipe or things like that where you need to penetrate through to the backside, 6010 is really going to come in most handy for really dirty and uh, rusty metal when you can't totally clean it. Now if you liked this video and learned something here, uh, I just want to point out my online courses linked down in the description. They've been out for about a year now and helped so many people to be able to learn and develop their skills. And a lot of people think with an online course, why am I going to pay for information that I can get for free? Well, there's no secret information in there, but learning a skill like welding isn't about having the information. If it was, then we'd all be excellent at it. It's about practice and having the right information right when you need it. And so that's what I've done in the online courses is I've packaged everything together to give you the exact information and a practice exercise at the point in the journey that you need it so that you can walk through that. Now I've priced them right now, they're $39, which if it saves you a couple of hours, it will have paid for itself for most people. And if you don't like it or find it's not for you, just shoot me an email, I'll give you your money back, uh, no questions asked. Thank you for tuning in, I really do appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of all of you, and for that, I'm very grateful. We'll see you next time.